my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. One thing I've been thinking about recently is putting like an intro video here for people who are not familiar with my channel and what I like to talk about. And so I, I used to just put like a basic one up there and I took it down, I don't know, a couple years ago, maybe, maybe a year ago, maybe. And I need to refilm one. And I've been thinking about what is what is it I do here that's a little bit different because I'm not a basic DIY channel. I'm not here doing a quilt a week or a tutorial a day, you know, whatever. It's just not what I'm about. I'm really about our quilting lifestyle. My goal is to show you how to be the best quilter you can be and how to use your time effectively, how to have fun with your quilting, to relax, to enjoy it, to quilt more if that's your goal. Not everybody's goal is to quilt more. Uh, you might just wanna listen to quilting and that would be, that would be my job as well. <laughs> but as I consider myself, my, I consider quilting as is a lifestyle. It is something that is really part of my heart and my soul. And I know that a lot of you who are here and who watch are the same way. We are kindred spirits. And so one of the things I want to talk about in the second half of the video today is us kind of getting ourselves in a hole because we often will take on a lot of things and just, um, you know, get, get to a point where we're like, ah, you know, this, I can't do, I can't possibly do all this stuff that I've said I'm going to do. So it's like, how do you get yourself, you know, out of the hole? How do you get your quilting schedule under control? Uh, so I'm going to do that in the second half, but before we get there, I, and, and just go back to the intro, like I'm, I'm, if, if you have thoughts, <laughs> Of what you feel like my channel is about leave them in the comments because I might just in the intro video pop up a few of yours in there to say this is how um, all of you feel about coming here almost every day to watch and uh, enjoy what I like to talk about and enjoy your quilting so I think that would be really fun all right let's do a couple other uh, spins around the studio first uh, this is sitting next to me <laughs> here we go it is well oh, now I can't, you can't see it let me get it over here so this is a box of batting so when you order a roll of batting not a box of batting this is a roll this is a roll of batting so you order a roll of batting i am starting to work with the warm company they are fabulous the batting is really really nice i have used it in the past i just hadn't used it recently and they contacted me and said can we send you some batting to try and i'm like ah yeah go ahead <laughs> and so um, my long armor karen and i have been you know sort of messing around we're taking the, they sent us a bunch of different battings they're all fabulous and then marking what we use them on so that i could go back and sort of feel the batting strip and know which one it was and then i ordered a couple of those so this one i got two i got the 80 20 which there is one that i did with the sweet childhood memories which is the quilt that's hanging on the wall behind me when we go to the other side of the table sweet childhood memories and then the other is the um, that was the 100% cotton and it, you know, there's, this is an 80, 20 blend. Did I say that? This is an 80, 20 blend, which is super fabulous. It is just gorgeous, drapes beautifully. And this is the hundred percent, which is also wonderful. It's not as, um, like some hundred percents are really crinkly. They're like the old fashioned bats. This is a more modern bat so that it is a hundred percent, but it is still got, um, you, you know, you don't have to quilt it as close and things like that. You have to always read all the directions. Uh, they also have a white bat, which has been really good. We use that for Harrisonburg um, and, you know, just, just writing it down. So I highly recommend the Warm and Natural battings. I think that they are just been so lovely to work with. Now that is actually going to, uh, going to with Karen today, <laughs> to, to giving it to her to use on my quilts that she has to long arm. So, uh, yeah. Fun, fun to get a whole box of batting. Thank you, warm and natural. All right, a few other things. All right, I'm I'm looking here at Miss Flamingo, and I told you the other day that uh, 
I pulled that light ballerina pink and it just is like the same colors, the same shades, the lightness of the flamingo of Florence, the flamingo. And I'm like, this is perfect. But when I put it up there, it just didn't do it for the quilt. Um, so I went into the pink bucket of fabrics and because I have way too many fat quarters and not enough things that are a little bit bigger, I didn't have as many options in pink to try out that, that looked good. So I do have two. Let's look at it with the other camera. So what I found is a stripe and the strawberries. The strawberries are kind of fun. This one I have quite a bit, so I've got plenty. I just think they're kind of darling. But then I found this pink with a red, skinny, skinny red stripe. And I think that might be it. What do you think? Do you like, or you might still like the ballerina pink. I don't know. You can tell me whether that's, that's the one for you. But I just found that it looked a bit wimpy. It didn't do anything for the quilt. It needed to be a darker, some sort of darker shade of pink. And so the ambassadors all like this one too. <laughs> Nobody liked that one. We all were like, ah, oh, it just doesn't do anything for it. Okay, maybe another, maybe as an inner border, maybe a little inner border of that, and then one of these. So tell me what you think. Now I'm thinking that the ballerina pink as a little inner border is perfect. That would be perfect. Okay, so then one of the other two for the outer border. All right, then got a plan, got a plan for Miss Florence. <laughs> Want to get Florence done. <laughs> there is a bug flying in here. If you see me go like this, it's because it got in my face. Ah, bugs. All right, let's go around to the other side. First, the swim team quilt. I, um, I was having trouble figuring out which block I used. I mean, the, the AccuQuilt website has tons of blocks and I don't have any of the paperwork and I didn't save an, uh, an image of it in anywhere. And so I asked our ambassador, Kathy, who is really good with the AccuQuilt. She's been using them for many, many years. And I asked her if she could uh, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy found it. This is it. Uh, it is the, the, the block pattern. That's all I use. And then the setting is my layout that I have not written a pattern for. I just did it for myself just for fun. I didn't write any pattern. Uh, but the block is a really cool block. And when you link to the page, there are links to the dies uh, that were used. The pattern itself is free and it's written for the AccuQuilt, but you can convert it to, you know, non AccuQuilt if you want. But if you want to pick up the dies, you can also link through because I'm giving you the link that gives me the commission so that when you link it and you purchase the dies, I will get um, a commission off of those, which helps my small family business. Thank you. Mwah, mwah. All right. When I was working the other day, let me just, I got to move some stuff here. So first, well, this, you're just going to see this. Do I have to do that first? No, let's do that first because it's in the way. Uh, these are just things that things I was working on. All right. All right. Let's do this first. The, um, the little houses. Well, because I finished the fruit cake, I, I have either the aqua, the aqua blocks are the only thing I have right now to run through as I'm sewing other things to do starts and stops. I thought, well, let me just get four of these houses cut because that was my goal. So let me show you sort of my thought process and how I am, how I, how I was deciding on which, which ones to do. Plus there is a pattern just for the houses. Now this pattern is on sale. I suppose this is a printed pattern. It's not a PDF. So it's a printed pattern. So I suppose when they're gone, they're gone. And you can make the houses without the panel. You could just make, you know, you know, you can make the houses without the kit. You can use your own fabrics. They are really darn cute houses. I love it. And it's on sale. But if you actually had the panel, um, which is with all the sayings and stuff, then you could just get this and use your own fabrics to go with the sayings. Okay. So, so that means I had to look at this and decide what I was going to do. So first of all, first of all, the, for the, the panel, should I put it back? Oh, it's over here. Those are just the fabrics and there's a pan. I like, I have already bought the panel by itself. I'll leave that open. I already bought the panel by itself, which is mostly, there's a couple of sayings, one, two, three, and then the rest are these, which are, are printed. It looks like quilt blocks, but they're printed. So here's, here's one, see? 
It's just so cool. Here's one. Just so cool. Well, I decided, because I'm only going to do four, 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 uh, that I would do two sayings and two houses without, you know. So I picked this one. Um, zip. I'll read upside down. Be happy with simple pleasures and have courage when things go wrong. We all need courage, right? We all need courage when things go wrong. And they will. They will, and they do. We can do hard things. That's my... Since I broke both my wrists, that is my goal. That is my mantra. We can we can do hard things. Be of good cheer. This is my absolute favorite. I don't know why. I think I like the fonts, the two fonts. I like that it has be of good cheer is kind of an old fashioned saying. And I just I just love it. Love it. So those are the two that I'm going to use in two of the houses. So I thought, you know, I want one of the houses to be red. And I don't want to follow exactly because, you know, I'm only going to make a few of these. So I wanted one of the houses to be red. And then I thought, well, maybe one of them blue. And then I started looking and I realized if I just look at this corner, can you see this? I don't think so. Let me put some fabric here. Hold on. There we go. Now you can see. So if I just do these four, I am going to mimic this, the red and the peach house and then the gray but I think I'm going to change the roof. I think I decided to change the roof. So I'll do four. And then I'll have a lot of other fabrics. I might do like a piano key around the outside. It would be cool maybe to use a stripe. But I don't know that I have a stripe that works. Because I wouldn't have enough of their stripe. And all of their stripes are gone. They do have um, their other fabrics. But all the stripes are gone. So I've got the two squares. And then I went ahead and grouped um you know a bunch of the the fabrics here so that i could kind of think about them and i don't know i've kind of messed them up a little bit but whoops it'd be good if you saw it sorry about that so i did groupings for houses the grays i believe like this might be the gray the two with the panel so the grays the greens and the peach and then the house is one peach house and one with the red house uh, and blue peach and blue so I think that's where I'm going these are the windows and I think I'm using this one over here again as well and so these are fat eighth pieces so the quilt is done with fat eighth if I remember fat eighth pieces but that's because you have the centers of half of them are a panel so remember that if you're not using the panel you will need more fabric because you've got to make more inside houses so that is underway. All right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's switch gears. I'm going to switch my paper over because I made some notes for myself. I made some notes. So what I wanted to do, someone in the group, uh, if quote along with Pat Sloman at Facebook, brought up that they, they'd gotten themselves in a pickle. They were scheduled uh, and volunteered, whatever, uh, to do a bunch of quilts, and they just... And they're smart because this is the end of August and these were end of year, mostly end of year deadlines. And so she'd already gone through and figured out what they all were and realized she was in trouble. It was going to need to make an adjustment in order to make all this happen if it was all going to still happen. And so that got me to thinking, you know, has your schedule ever overwhelmed you? Yes, of course. Of course. We all, we all have been in that boat. Now there, I know, I know there's, there's the rare handful of you that do one quilt at a time, never do more than one at a time. You start it, you finish it. Mwah. We, we love you, but we don't understand you, but that's okay. <laughs> if it makes you happy, that's awesome. But we can't relate because many of us want to do multiple things at once we get bored if we just have I, I could never do one single quilt all the way through and nothing else nothing else at the same time uh so uh, you know that's just the way life is for for many of us quilters is we are multitaskers we like to do a lot of things at once so that puts us in a pickle occasionally so i want to give you five ways to get control of your quilting schedule and your quilt it's really your quilting life your quilting schedule unless you have no deadlines is really your life because it impacts everything if you're stressed out about finishing a quilt it's going to impact your 
family life, it's going to impact your work, it's going to impact your friendships because you're, you've got this angst over something. It's just like having your own personal schedule being, you know, like for, for work overloaded or your family events overloaded. It's all the same thing. So here are five, five ways to get control of things. And I know that they are a little bit of work, but they are so worth it because you will understand exactly what your situation is and exactly how you can fix it. First is you have to make a list. Number one, if you do not have a list of the items, stop the video, write them down. Often your brain will make things a lot bigger and worse than they are if you don't have it written down. Often when you write it down, all of a sudden you, you feel, you feel it. It's just because oh, it does for me. If I, if I haven't written it down for a long time, it's like, ah, oh, okay. All right. I can do this. All right. That's fine. Oh, okay. Like that one. Hmm. You know, but, but once you can see it, you're good. You can go on to the next step. Uh, the next step is, <laughs> And this can be a little bit hard because you've made commitments, whether you've made commitments externally or just to yourself, is you need to decide, uh, are there things on here you don't really need to do? You know, do you really need to make a birthday quilt for your, um, you know, your niece's kid? You know, maybe you can buy them a gift this time. Maybe make the quilt for next year or you, if you do Christmas things or just for a special thing, something very special, just out of the blue, you make it instead of on their birthday when it may even be missed and not appreciated as much. Uh, so anyways, look at them. Look, is there something you can just not do? Uh, the other thing is, is there something that you can ask for help? Now, if you're doing a group project, let's say you volunteered to, to do the charity quilt, can you ask some of your friends to help you either sew it or if you have friends that it, maybe it's a charity like the Dog Humane Society or something, uh, ask your friends to donate the money to have it long armed. That way you don't have to do the quilting on it. You could make the top if that can still fit in your schedule and your friends can participate and be part of this in some way of, of being a group effort to make the charity quilt for the organization. Um, so you're going to need to look really hard at all of these items and decide, can you get rid of some? Can you ask for help? Can you push them off? Maybe you don't get rid of it, but you're like, okay, uh, you know, I'll push off that one. It doesn't have to be done by this deadline. I thought it did, but maybe I don't really have to. I can, you know, I'm the only one that knew that there was a deadline. So we'll just, we'll just move it. All right. So that's, that's hard. I know that that's hard because you don't want to, I never want to go back on my word. If I've said, I'm going to do something, I come hell or high water. <laughs> really? I will get it done. I broke both my wrists and only one quilt along had to be delayed. And it was rough. I had a lot of friends who jumped in and helped. Um, and only one had to be delayed and it still got done. It was just about two months later. We took like a two or three month break till I could get past the worst of it in the beginning. All right, number three, this one takes a little bit of commitment, but it is also so worth it. If you, you need to understand how long it takes you to make things. So start a calendar, get your calendar out and on every day for a week, for seven days, write down the start time and the end time of when you worked on your quilting projects, whether it is just pulling fabric, ironing, starching, cutting, sewing, binding, whatever, every single step. But if you worked on anything associated with it, looking for patterns, write down how much time. And so at the end of the week, you can tally up those seven days and you can find out whether you only worked five hours in the whole week, whether you worked 20 hours in the whole week. You need to know that number because that helps you with the next step. Now you know which projects you're going to do. You know how long you spend each week on your quilting, approximately, you know, give or take, but approximately. So now you have to decide and figure out, you don't decide, you're actually gonna plot it out on your calendar 
uh, how long it will take you to finish these projects. So you get, get your calendar and if the first project you need to do is just binding. You know you can get that binding done in two hours. Okay, you're gonna work on that on Thursday evening and Friday evening because you know you're not gonna have enough time on Thursday evening to finish it. So it's gonna take you two days. So that's on your calendar for two days. Then you have a quote you haven't even started yet, but you have the finished deadline. So you know that's going to take you 120 hours. How, long, how, much, how many hours do you work on your quilting available? How many hours do you have available? Maybe you only have 10. So if it's 120 hours, it's going to take you quite a few weeks if you only work 10 hours a week on it. It might take you six or seven, you know, six weeks. Um, 12 weeks if you really only work 10 hours and it's going to take you 120 hours you think to finish it that's 12 weeks that's four, that's uh that's what three months so you're going to need three months to work on that project uh, so these are the numbers you have to look at and realistically lay out so i know it sounds brutal and i've written all of this in the description box here at uh, youtube and over at my website today on on um on my blog. Okay, let's talk about the final one. At this point, you've done all the hard work. You've done the evaluation. You know how much time. You've done it on the plot, on the calendar. So now you have to decide what really what things can I accomplish? Um, or do I need to drop some of them or shift their timeline or ask for help? It's really the evaluation stage is number five. Evaluation is your superpower. You have control over what you're doing. Even if you have to tell an organization, I just can't make this, you'll have to, you'll have, to have somebody else do it. That's a decision. It's, an, it's something that will save your sanity um, and they will be happy because they have time to go get somebody else to do it they won't be at the very last minute with nothing. Uh, so you have to um, you know, value everybody's position in it. But evaluating everything now is your superpower at the end when you've got all this. Okay, I hope that was helpful to some of you. Let me know, because uh, quilting is our life. Quilting is our life and we want it to be fun and enjoyable. So I love you, Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.